listening to the She Is Podcast, where we are encouraging and equipping women to be confident in God's promises. Join Sherry, Nicole, and Jamie in a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Hello, everyone. We want to welcome you back to the podcast. Woo-hoo. Well, once again, our sweet Nicole is out, <laughs> and we miss her yes. for sure. Yeah. She is such a vital part of our team, so yes. we're yes. just hobbling along without her. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully, she'll be around next time, but yes. we also have Amanda back with Woo! us. And, uh, yeah, I'm Jamie, and we've got Sherry, mm-hmm. so... Um, Thank you guys for joining us. We're so thankful for you um, because it would be silly to record this and <laughs> not really get to, to share with anybody. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so we have a really neat conversation in store for you today. Um, we are talking about women in the Bible that played a really... Um, different kind of role and kind of we're diving deeper into things that um that we really had just glanced at before Mm -hmm. and so it was just a really neat conversation uh i hope you look forward to hearing it and there are some some key things that came up towards the end um that uh i just yeah i guess want to draw your attention to and and have you think about is that as women of god do we understand our duty for the lord and what is a donation that we have to give to the kingdom of God. So hang tight and get your Bibles ready. We're going to have an amazing discussion today. So ladies, I'm curious. I have, I've been fortunate enough to do what I imagined to do when I was a child. Uh Um, So, but I am curious are you doing the job or the role or the position that you thought you would as a child? And if not, what did you want to be? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's how you ask that is very deep. (laughs) Um, I don't think I could have imagined where I'm at now. Um, so right now I am currently a, uh, supervisor, Um, for Sky Lakes, our hospital. Um, So, I mean, there's a million departments. Okay, not exactly. There's a lot of (laughs) departments. So I'm just a small piece of that team. So anyway, um, I I love that role of leadership and getting to um, build others up and equip them. Mm. Uh, However, that is not where I saw myself when I was a (laughs) child. So when I was, um, when I was, Probably the first job I wanted when I was little was to be a dentist. Mm, serious? Yeah. Aww. So like probably probably like first through maybe fifth grade that was mm. kind of like my career goal and I don't really know why. Mm. Maybe because I went to the dentist and thought they were cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's, I guess that's healthcare. So you know, mm, yes. <laughs> there's the connection. There's yep. the connection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> mine's kind of silly because at first I just I wanted to do chor- choreography. Oh, uh-huh. dancing, singing. That's just I really liked that. Then I got a little older, and then it was like, well, that's probably not going to happen. But I I really wanted to help people, so I wanted to teach or instruct or do something like that. And now I kind of do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of do that. Yeah. That's but awesome. no, I would never, ever, ever in my wildest dreams would have imagined me where I'm at today. There's no way. No. So how would you describe your role now? Uh, my people role that now? don't know. <laughs> so I am the women's pastor and women's director here at Refuge City Church. And so I... I have the honor of being able to speak and encourage and uplift and and teach Bible study and um, do all of those things. And so, yeah, it's not at all what I thought I would be doing, but I love it. Yeah, so like I mentioned, I, I always wanted to be a teacher, and I don't know, I don't know exactly why, but I do, I remember having papers, and I would like... Which is so humorous, because as an adult, an actual teacher, grading is the worst. Um, I, I think it's just, I think it's the worst. And I 
Sorry for anyone out there that doesn't agree with me. <laughs> and any other teachers out there that Every agree. job's going to have right. its thing, right? right. <laughs> well, it's just, it's so, um, it's it can be so time-consuming. But I remember as a child, I would have, like, a paper or what have you, and, you know, marking things wrong. So, like, the check mark <laughs> for wrong. I don't know why that was wrong. But then um, I would go back, and I just assumed that people were always going to redo their work, right? So I would do this really big C over it if it was corrected. I don't know. The little things you remember. But <laughs> anyway, I don't do any of that now. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of correction being done. Um, but, yeah. So like, I, better luck next right. time. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, I... I encourage learning from mistakes, but it doesn't, it's, yeah, it doesn't pan out the way I had it in my head, you mm. know, as a child. But, um, so no, I, I get to teach and I'm in the classroom actually teaching and I love it. Um, so what, what do you teach? Oh, okay. So <laughs> I actually teach fifth grade. So at an elementary school and they're so fun. <laughs> Sixth grade on up, they, you know, they, the mood swings are increased, <laughs> you know, for some. And so mm. it, it gets a little harder. Um, below fifth grade, they're still developing. Fifth, fifth grade is like this sweet spot where they get mm. my jokes. Mm. And they still think I'm kind of funny. <laughs> they, you know, if, yeah. you, if yeah. you do it right, you can still be present with them. And they just lap it up. And so it's, it's great. I, I really love it. I love my job. So... Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if the Lord's done with me. I don't know what else he's going <laughs> to call right. me to, but teaching, right. I love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So good. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, actually, oddly enough, that kind of goes into, I think, what we're going to be learning about today as we get into the Word mm -hmm. about um, the roles that God has designed for us mm -hmm. to walk in. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going to pray and... And Sherry's going to take it away. <laughs> so, dear God, we thank you so much for another opportunity to get together mm -hmm. and to learn and to hear your voice. And, Lord, that's just what we ask for more than anything else is for your voice to be just loud and clear mm -hmm. as you speak to us. And Because, God, you're the one that we want to learn from today. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask for your spirit to, to speak and to decipher the words and to inspire our spirits and help us to come alive and to mm -hmm. um, acknowledge the roles that you've put us in mm -hmm. and what part we play mm -hmm. and how we can do it better and how we can bring you glory in everything that we do. Yeah. So thank you, Lord. Speak through Sherry today and mm -hmm. inspire our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woohoo. So today, um, we're going to go over a couple of scriptures that, um, that I know I've read many times, but I didn't see the women in these scriptures. So we're going to be reading in Exodus 38.8. And John 18, 15 through 18. So get your Bibles ready. And I know, uh, maybe not so much in Exodus, but I know John 18, we talk about a lot. And you'll recognize it when we get there. But let's start with Exodus 38, 8. So we're talking about um, some young women that are assembled together for the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, we're talking about, um, in, in Exodus, we're talking about the making of the altar, the, um, the uh, anointing oils, the incense. We're pre preparing for the tabernacle, all the materials, all the everything that goes in that. And so in, um, in Exodus 38, 8, we are talking about a very important part. It says, He made the laver of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the serving women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So, if anyone knows what a labor is, I didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really the, the place where the priests came to cleanse. So, this is a very important place. So, so as the priests are approaching the tent of meeting, um, they were to come and they were to sacrifice, make a sacrifice. So now they're messy. So their feet are dirty from walking. Their hands are messy. Their arms are messy from the sacrifice. So now they approach the laver, which is full of water that has been blessed. 
and they wash their hands and their feet so that they can go into the holy place mm -hmm. to to be with God, right? To pray and to so this is a very important this is a very important thing here, and it's. Um, uh, in my studies, it says it is round. It's like a big bowl mm -hmm. that has the water in it. And they used, so uh, it, please correct me if I'm wrong, but, but Moses and them are putting this together. And, and they, they use the mirrors from the women that are assembled at the door. The doorkeepers of the tent of meeting have their pretty bronze mirrors and they use these they melt them down and form the laver mm -hmm. that the water goes into what an honor mm -hmm. what an honor but what struck me is so I've read this I know this but what I didn't think about each time I've read this is the women assembled at the door why did I miss them <laughs> How did I miss them? Because I'm, I'm thinking so much about what's going to happen here, what the bronze is being used for. But I've never really gave much thought to these women at the door. And so in different scriptures, different, uh, not scriptures, different translations, uh, these women, um, some, in some translations, they're, they're considered the gatekeepers at the tent of meeting. And so um, they, they are assembled there. Uh, some say that they are worshiping women, that they, uh, they have come to just be as close to God as they can possibly be, mm -hmm. to be servants to the Lord. And, and their, their, their placement is at the gate mm -hmm. to the tent of meeting. And then not only is that I mean, that's important, but then their precious items, you know, that are costly, very costly, their items, they now surrender, mm -hmm. they sacrifice those in order to make this very prominent piece that goes with the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an honor is that? What, what a servant's heart I, I've never seen it like that. Have you ladies seen these these no. serving girls before? No. I um, I was telling Sherry before when she sent her notes over, I was uh, just looking at what what she was going to be sharing today, and I was thinking, oh, we're making a, maybe a little bit of assumptions here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be honest and say that. And, um, and then I looked up the verses, and I was like, oh, these women really were assigned there, and the Bible said so. Like, we're we're not just inserting our place, no. you know, because it it sounds good and and uh, we want to have mm -hmm. we want to have this place, and so we're inserting ourselves into God's story, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. Um, but there, I mean, it's it's very clear that there were serving women um, assembled at the door. Yes, I I love that. I I think. Um, it can be really easy to feel like there's not a place for you mm -hmm. as a woman in ministry. <laughs> oh. um, anyway, just yeah. throwing that out there. But there was a mm -hmm. place for them, and they were serving, and they they were very close to the presence of God. Yes. So, and what stands out to me is that what they were assigned to give was more than enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that that was more than enough mm -hmm. because. <clears throat> and, you know, reading that it was from the bronze mirrors of the women who served at the entrance. And, and when you think of a mirror, this isn't just some material. This was mm -hmm. something that you used to look at yourself. <laughs> you were, you know, you had to reflect on yourself. You had to sit. Mm. And so I think, I think even in that, that's kind of interesting that they were called to give something. And it could have been very precious to them. Mm -hmm. They were called to give it. And it was more than enough because assembled all together, mm -hmm. which there's right. power in that, having <laughs> all, you know, it, mm -hmm. you each give a little. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, having it be the bronze mirrors, I think that, that just kind of um, settled with me a little bit. Because, you know, if you were coming in to wash off, mm. and I, I don't know, I mean, you were coming in to wash off, and then the idea of it being in this basin that was made of mirrors... 
It was almost mm-hmm. like you had to re-examine yourself, re- mm-hmm. re-evaluate yourself yes. before you walked in. Mm-hmm. Which, and that was the hope, right? Was yes. You didn't mm-hmm. get to go and, you know, that the veil was not torn at that point. So mm-hmm. you didn't just get to bring yourself at any point in time. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Lots of layers. Yeah, <laughs> lots of layers. And it must have been beautiful. Oh, oh gosh, yes. Yeah. I'm always amazed when I, you know, it's, it's not the most enjoyable reading experience mm. when you're reading about <laughs> <laughs> the building of the mm-hmm. tabernacle right. sorry i'm just keeping it real right right um, but what I, what amazes me is that they had everything that they needed to put it together mm. right and when they like this is stuff they're packing on their backs i'm, mm. I'm maybe mm-hmm. i don't know it doesn't mention having carts and stuff mm-hmm. but i'm like they have they have all these materials. Yeah. I don't I mean and talks about them being in the wilderness, so I don't imagine there being a whole lot of like trees <laughs> right. to cut down to to have the wood. I don't I mean they got it from somewhere. I don't right. know. But it's like you're talking about wood and you're talking about gold and fabric and and dye and now mirrors. It's like yes. this is all the stuff that they had with mm, them. Right. And um <laughs> I know when you have a limited supply of something, it mm. can be really easy to like hoard mm. it and be like, yeah, yeah, this is this is it. There, mm-hmm. I can't go to the store and get another one of these mirrors. Yeah. You know, right. this this is what I got, and um, if I don't have it, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to depend on someone else to <laughs> make me look presentable. But I love that their willingness to to give that up. Yeah. And it's not just one person. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know how many ladies right. this would be. Mm-mm. But Mm-mm. I think we've seen depictions of this. And this, this is a big, like, sink. And you're talking it about is. if you're washing off the grime of all yeah. the animals. Like, mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. I think it would have to have mm-hmm. lots of water in there. Um, so yes. this is a big deal. So I'm imagining there's lots of mirrors and lots of ladies right. participation involved in mm-hmm. creating this so how cool that there was a place for them and that they um, were able to um, humble themselves yes. to give this sacrifice mm-hmm. in order mm-hmm. that the the priests that served could um, could do their duties yeah yeah well and not knowing who they were I studied more to see you know, what, is there more about them? Is there, um, like Jamie asked me, are, are they in other books of the Bible? Um, and and it does go on to say that they were also part of who um, ha- helped with the materials to put the materials, and make the curtains and all those things. It does go on to say that they're a part of that. But there's really not a lot to it. So I I looked in different commentaries that I trust, and um, and some of the commentaries um, said that perhaps these were simple servant women that just, for whatever reason, that that was just their job. You know how some of them were to make the linen, some were, you know, to dye the linen. Some of them, their job was to serve, which could mean sweeping, cleaning, uh, wiping out the basin, mm-hmm. you know. A, a, a genuine servant, the, the servant heart, to clean up after the priests have come to do what they need to do there. And so were they simple servant women? Um, some translations suggested that they were dedicated by their families so maybe perhaps they were family members of some of the priests or someone. Um, and one of them even suggested, like what we had talked about earlier, Hannah's son Samuel being dedicated to the Lord. And so he went and he lived there and served the Lord doing different things. Maybe these women were that as well. We don't know. How, how yeah. did they get there? How many were there? Um I, I even looked up the mirrors, and it's this simple little round, highly polished mm-hmm. flat piece of bronze with a stick like a, you know, from an olive tree or something that mm-hmm. it was tied onto with vine. And so, it and it wasn't something that every woman had. Mm-hmm. 
it it suggested that many came from Egypt or from that area because it wasn't something it 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 wasn't just the rich ladies had it it wasn't you know the princesses or high priest's wife or whatever you could have that but it it was a priceless heirloom mm. that you would have had and for these ladies um to sacrifice that mm -hmm. for that reason, you're right. It's not like they can just go get another one. Let's just whip another one up, you know? Yeah. And so it's very highly polished. And once it was melted together, like you said, Amanda, it was just enough that it made the perfect size of a wash basin that the Lord, because, you know, the tabernacle has specific measurements. This mm -hmm. little basin did not. It doesn't say how big it was that I've found. And so I just thought it was really interesting um, that they they just gave of their prized position. Um, well, and I just love that it <laughs> nothing is ever by accident. So if it is written in the Bible, right. it's not like, right. you know, mm -hmm. a typo. It, that doesn't happen. So I, I do love the fact that um, these women are mentioned and so, mm -hmm. and it's not just, you know, it could have been that these um, mirrors were put together, period, right? These mirrors right. were put together to make the heading, which is called making the bronze basin. Right, mm -hmm. right. But no, these women are mentioned mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're um, in the capacity at which they served was also mentioned because yeah. it was, it's, it's, a it's big not, deal. yeah, and it's not something that was just like your service is not unrecognized. Yes. And I think that that is highlighted here because mm -hmm. the Lord made sure that little, that little. Well, and, and to be dog. in that position. I mean, when I think of a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper, I, I instantly think of a man. But these were women that gathered and were servants there. Um, but then I, the more I thought about it, um, it, I wrote here, they were gathered as close in proximity to the holy place as they could rightfully be. Mm. Right, which just reminds me of, like, the lady um, of the issue with the blood and all of those mm -hmm. different... And, and you hear about it spoken. It It's on you. You're going to push through yeah. and get as close to the Lord as you can. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's yeah. amazing. So they drew close to whom they served. Mm. And that just really struck me. So they sacrificed. They have the honor of being gathered there at the gate. Were they just simple servants? Were they dedicated to the Lord? Really, any and all would have been fine because, because they were as close to the one they wanted to serve as they could possibly be. And it made me <laughs> wonder, do I draw as close to the one... I'm supposed to serve mm. as I want to be. Do I draw in as close as I can? Because there there was literally a line these women could not cross. Mm -hmm. And yet they were as close as they possibly could without getting in trouble mm -hmm. to be close to the one they served. Right. Well, and if the, I mean, and depending on what it came with, I mean, call me what you will. You can call me a doorkeeper. You can call me a, a basin washer. You can call me whatever you like because I'm not here for your title. The Lord's yeah. given me mine. So I'm not here for whatever so good. It is that you call me. Right. And so if that means that I'm going to sit there and scrub the, the glass basin out of all the gunk from the animals, I'll, you know, that came off of right. individuals, I'll do it because. That's what mm -hmm. I'm willing to do to get this close to the Lord. Yes. That's good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, but then in my studies, I also saw that there's a woman doorkeeper in John that I never saw before. We've seen her differently, and we'll explain mm -hmm. that. So let's go to John 18, 15 through 18, and we will discuss her more. We know her... Um, we portrayed her when we did our um, walkthrough of Israel uh, for Easter those years that we did that. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, so let's just read John eighteen fifteen through 18. It says, Peter denies Jesus is the heading of mine. It says, and Simon Peter, Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. 
Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. So, a couple of things stood out at me, is as I'm reading this, I recognized, yeah, there was a girl standing at the fire pit that calls out Peter, right? Aren't you, aren't you one of the disciples? Mm -hmm. And he yells, some Mm -hmm. translations say he cusses at her, no, I'm not that man, right? What I didn't realize is, let's forget about her at that position, Because before she was doing that, she was the doorkeeper who allowed and didn't allow someone into the courtyard of the high priest. Again, a woman guarding a door? Hmm. Which in the discernment that she must have had to have. Yes. You know, and and so, yeah, and it speaks on that and that one disciple... You know, and they're not named in that section of scripture, but right. the other disciple just walked right in. Right. right? But then for Peter, for Simon Peter, for her to be like, wait, hold on. What? <laughs> right. You right. know, which is. Who are you? There's so many layers to this because, again, mm-hmm. I mean, the Lord had. That was already spoken of. The Lord knew exactly what was going to happen before it even mm-hmm. happened, right? So for it, it just posed the. or it positioned her in a place to allow Peter to deny the Lord, which he knew was going to happen. I mean, Mm -hmm. so it should, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, she was placed in that exact position Mm -hmm. for that exact moment Yeah, for, for that sequence. Right. Right. And different translations place her differently. So the one that I just read places her at the door Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and questions him at the door Mm -hmm. where other translations then, uh, primarily just put her at the fire Mm -hmm. doing that. But she actually, if I'm reading Mm -hmm. this correctly, the very first time she questions this man is not at the fire. Mm -hmm. It's at the door. Well, and it's, I think, I mean, it's just different translations. It is. And you got to think about, you know, the perspective of the person writing. Mm -hmm. Um, So in John here, um, I think... You know, he had a different perspective, mm-hmm. and we see here, which I don't think we see in the other ver- or in the other books mm-hmm. um, where this is mentioned. But we we see that um, that the high priest knew the other disciple, mm-hmm. and what I'm seeing at this. I don't know if this really doesn't have anything to do with your topic, but I'm just like, it's just, this is stuff that we usually blow past because yes. you know, Jesus is about to die. We're, we're getting right. there. Right. But, That's yeah. why it's important. Yes, yeah. please. But, yes. but, but here's, yeah, let's pause a second and take in the entire yes. circumstances and sequence of mm-hmm. events. And so John tells us that the high priest knew this disciple that came mm-hmm. in. So do you think he knew that he was a follower of Jesus? I'm thinking probably. Right. right. Um, and so I think this other disciple's like, hey, oh, Peter was just here. Like, oh, go, go, go get Peter. We should get Peter in here, you know? Right. And then, and so he, whoever that disciple was, wasn't mm-hmm. feeling condemned for being in the presence of Jesus mm-hmm. right then. That's but, good. But, but somehow, you know, Peter was wanting to keep his distance. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's between him and the Lord. <laughs> right. But he didn't feel... Like, he should be there. He felt like if he was going to have that association with Jesus, he might come to the same end. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I don't want to be inferring too much from Scripture. But for whatever reason, one one went in that the high priest knew. Mm -hmm. um, And then I I think that's just some intel that John has that the other authors didn't have. And so that's where we see, you know, other bystanders would be like, oh, yeah, this girl from the fire was like, hey, Peter, do you know Jesus? Um, But but John Mm -hmm. has this intel, and that's what what we get um, Mm -hmm. here in his 
good way yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just another way of looking at it that mm -hmm. um, Peter wasn't necessarily um, being condemned. I don't think he was even being condemned no. by that girl. She was just like, right. well, oh, do you know him because he knows him? And, you know. Right, exactly. Right. Right. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yes. And he's like, oh, no, 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 don't associate <laughs> me with that guy. No. Nope. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. that Pete, that's that's Peter's issue, but I don't I don't think the girl was accusing him in her role. Right. Mm. Well, and I think that that's really interesting because have you ever well, I mean, maybe speaking for me. So I've had many a foot and mouth moment, right? So, <laughs> same. Same. So, you know, and there, there are times where the Lord has certainly not asked me to open my mouth when I open it, right? Like, he, he didn't right. ask for me to speak, and I, and right, I misspoke. Right, right, right. Um, but it's interesting because, yeah, she played a role. She she needed to ask that question so that Peter yeah. could answer. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting that there are times where you're called to speak, too. Just e yeah. even yeah. when it doesn't seem... Maybe relevant. It's like, there why are did I just say that? Right. You know, yeah. walking through the foyer and there's just a, hey, how was your week? To a person that maybe you don't speak to, but that gives them the opportunity to mm -hmm. speak. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that, yeah, the if the Lord places you by the door, if the Lord places you by the bathroom, <laughs> if the Lord places you, you know, yeah. wherever it is that he places you, you, you mm -hmm. need to listen to him in that because he's, you have a job and you need to fulfill it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just thinking of how um, I am before services, and you girls too. Mm -hmm. Like we, mm -hmm. I, I like hanging out in the foyer where mm -hmm. people are are coming in. Yeah. It's like I yeah. don't have to go look for people to talk to. Like they're coming in and they're, you know, they're heading in. So yeah. I, I don't want to keep them, but it's nice mm -hmm. to greet them and and yeah. let them know that they're seen. And yes. and that really does mean a lot to some people. Mm -hmm. There's been some. I'm not out there too, too much, but you girls are more than me. Um, but, yeah, one, one gal I remember, and she's like, thanks so much for talking to me. Mm -hmm. I've been going through some hard stuff, and, and you know, it's hard for me to talk to people. And, you know, I'm like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just, it's a mm -hmm. kind of a good place to have that kind mm -hmm. of fellowship. Um, for, and people do really need that. They do. So, anyway, I, I like to be positioned at the door. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Yeah. Well, and because there's some, so again, I needed to study this. So some studies uh, questioned, did she not allow him to go in? Or was it that he, just like what you're talking about, Jamie, was it, um, did, did he not feel comfortable going in? Was he afraid of being recognized? Was it that, oh, I, I don't want to be, you know, and I don't want to be known to know him. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to put myself there. But it, was it the discernment of the girl? Was it? Uh, we don't know. It doesn't say. Mm -hmm. um, but something was clearly happening there. So here's this girl, just like you're saying, Jamie, good morning, how are you? The one just breezes right past her and goes on <laughs> in. Well, this one, you know, and she doesn't stop him. She doesn't <laughs> say anything according to scripture. Mm -hmm. Um but then I think partly, I mean, part of me thinks, just like what you were saying, Jamie, is, oh, should you be going in, too? Do you know him? Are you with him? Kind of a well, thing. Well, it's, I mean, it's so funny because it says that um, the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. So it's like he right. was like, oh, hey, my, my friend, like, they, they must have shut the door before I could make it in. <laughs> <Right>. Like, <laughs> you locked out my friend. <laughs> Like, he's not seeing an issue here. Right. Which is funny because Peter's on the other side of the door and saying, don't open no, it. We're good. We're good. I I'm, don't. Yeah. I'm good. I'll stay out Innocent here. Innocent bystander. Right. Well, I, and I don't mean to infer, but that's kind of what you get. Right. In that, it in is. That, um, scripture I've never is paused here that long. <laughs> Peter's like, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not that guy. Right. So I, I, I don't think she would have kept him out. I don't I, think so either. I think either. he kept himself out. Uh, I would agree. I would agree, but I wanted to put that out there because I don't know. We don't. We mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, either way, this doorkeeper was doing her job mm -hmm. as a trusted guard of a safe area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, this is, a, this is a, a safe place. This is the high priest's quiet place. You know, only certain people were allowed in, and a woman 
was the doorkeeper. Right. You're not just keeping kids out of the kitchen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, this is a title. This is a... <laughs> right. And so it just really struck me. And then, yeah, and being, being a woman or a young girl, again, we don't know their ages, but I would not... Um, because of the time. You know, nowadays, a man approaches and I'm guarding a door. Uh, no. <laughs> but we're talking about a different time. Mm-hmm. So, so would she have been bold enough to... Mm. N- no. No. Right. If need be. Yeah. Right. Would, would she stand in the authority of her position? Well, that's the... Like, what? why else would there be a doorkeeper? Right. I, I don't think they're greeters like, <laughs> like we are, you know? <laughs> I, I, that's not a... I don't think that's a doorkeeper. Right. Right. And, like, maybe but, I need to do some study there, too, but... But the way I'm reading it, she's clearly... Guarding, she mm-hmm. she's, she's given the authority to let people in yes. or not. Well, yes. even that, just kind of keeping tabs on it. I mean, mm-hmm. whether right, she right, said, because right. I I don't know, but for her to ask, wait, aren't you aren't you with him? Right. You know, right. so even just making connections, so that mm-hmm. there is a question later about who was or wasn't let in. There's yeah. that the innocence of the question, mm-hmm. really. Uh, reading it to me at first, I was like, there's innocence in her question. There is, but I also, I think there's some mm. intuition. And yep. maybe that's why Discernment, they have a girl yeah. in those positions. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Yes, because yes, it's like, yes. you know, we'll ask the questions and want to put the pieces together. Yeah, yeah, and be like, yeah. oh, like they're associated with so-and-so. Like, yeah. you know, the doorkeepers, mm-hmm. they, they kind of need that inside information, yeah. right? To yeah. do a good job. Yeah. Well, and what struck me too is in both situations, in Exodus and in this one in John, that these these women that are, you know, guarding the door or assembled at the door, other people recognized their authority. Right. Yeah, because it doesn't look like they were questioned. There's no. not, there's not, and I, not to say that they weren't, but there's not scripture to say. <laughs> and and was. if there uh-huh. was, w- I mean, it's, it is vital that we recognize their position. Otherwise, it would not be in the Bible. There's a lot of other stuff that happened that didn't make it in the Bible. There's a lot of women that are in the Bible, but it doesn't say what they did. They're not named. Some are named, like Deborah. And, but, but I think it's really important for us to, to at least think about this. Because it, it was important enough for them to put it in Scripture. So, so they weren't, in my mind, they couldn't have been questioned. They were placed for a purpose. And the men coming didn't didn't question that. Right? right. Well, because if they were, then they wouldn't have been there long, and then it wouldn't be in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I just love that. I mean, ultimately, if I were to time travel back in time, <laughs> I you know, if my name was in the Bible, that would be amazing. But do you, I mean, just thinking about the... Um, the reward that it is to even just be called the girl. Right. Call me the girl. That's fine. Right. I, you know, I would right. Right. let me play a part. Please let me play a part. And so yeah. to even just be listed as the girl that was the doorkeeper. Yeah. Whoo hoo! I'll take it. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I'm being used by the Lord. So put me where you want. Mm-hmm. I'll do whatever you ask. Well, I think that's the thing. If you have a a passion for wherever you are Mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to um just every everything about it is going to mean a lot to you you know you can tell the people that are are in like the they're owning their role Mm -hmm. wherever Mm -hmm. they're placed and they're passionate about it and and you know sometimes they'll talk to you about you know Part, things that they get to do and it just goes way <laughs> over your head or you're like that doesn't interest me but that's the mm-hmm. thing it's it's for them it's not yeah. it's not for you and so yeah just taking if you're able to have a passion for what you do mm-hmm. um and, th- and for the place that god's placed you <laughs> yes. in like you own it and mm-hmm. you don't question it 
-hmm. You just walk in it because Mm -hmm. you've been given that authority for whatever piece that you have been placed in. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Own it. Live up to it. Mm -hmm. Be passionate about it. (laughs) And just go at it with all your heart. So good. Yes. So I just had... I just have two questions to end our little session today. Give us something to chew on a little bit. Uh, do we understand our du- our duty and service to the Lord? Just what you're talking about, Jamie. Do we understand it? And are we standing in it? I think... Um, oh, gosh. There's so many like phases of this you could fall into. Mm. I think you can be in it. And be so used to it that Ooh. you lose that passion. Mm-hmm. You're like, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got up early this morning to be on worship team because mm-hmm. I was on the schedule. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it right. can happen very easily. You got up this morning mm-hmm. and... To come make coffee because that's coffee what I do. Make coffee for the masses because people want coffee when they come to church. Right, right. Um And we can get, you know, we can be fulfilling our Mm -hmm. role and in the role Mm -hmm. that God's laid out for us, um, but not truly be there. And our heart's not in it. Mm -hmm. Um, But we can also be, I think you can not, maybe not know what that is. And Mm -hmm. so you hold back and you wait and you wait and you wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, and this is just, this is where my passion is. It's like, (laughs) chances are what you're supposed to be doing, you're already somewhat doing in some world of your life because you're going to be doing something. Yep. And so if you are not sure what your calling is, look at the things you already do. And if you're not doing it for the Lord, how could you? Mm -hmm. How could you put, you know, your passion for serving the Lord into what you do at work? Or yes. what you do with your free time. Yes. Because God can be in those things, too. Mm-hmm. And is, yeah. just because he hasn't maybe spoken directly to you about do mm. this, 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 you're going to be, Jamie, you're going to be bled. <laughs> right. Um, <yeah. laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right. Right. I, like, I, I never heard that loud right. and clear, but I, I do know that he made me with purpose. And I know mm-hmm. that whatever he has designed for me, I've already got kind of like we talked about last week, I already have the yes. ingredients. Yep. I just need to put them together and ignite them yep. or yep. activate them, you know, get that going. Absolutely. And so, yeah, look at what you do and how can this be done for the Lord? How can I honor the Lord by what I do, by what I say, by the people that I interact with, by mm-hmm. the things that I learn, by the passions that I have, <laughs> yes. and the dreams that I have? Like all these things can point to God Mm -hmm. and can point others to Him, too. Yes. 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 Okay, sorry. No, what do you have to say about that, Amanda? No, that's just so good. I mean, you're, um, uh, if I can be vulnerable, I mean, you're speaking right. I'm, you're speaking right to me and you don't even know it. I mean, just the idea of, I mean, because like I said, I've always wanted to be a teacher, right? And I love teaching. But it's interesting how the Lord has kind of, I mean, like even sitting in this chair, you guys are teaching me, but we get to have this mm-hmm. conversation. And and I love that, but I didn't know that that was part of the plan. Mm-hmm. It was just you say yes, and mm-hmm. and the Lord has equipped, and He's yeah, clearly yeah. using my gifts, you know, because we always go way over when I'm here because I talk, talk, talk. <laughs> oh, you know, but I mean, it's the Lord has you know mm-hmm. he's placed those gifts in me so why am i questioning it if i'm doing it for my other job if right. i'm doing it um in my free time if i enjoy mm-hmm. chit chatting and all of those things why why am i doubting when an opportunity opens up whether or not it's from the lord mm-hmm. so it, it clearly is yes. right <laughs> yes it's, it's just so good, so good. I, I needed that so thank you <laughs> I did too, so thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. And then one more question, the last question. Do we have a donation for the kingdom of God? Oh, so like what's our mirror? Mm. Yes. What is our mirror? Mm-hmm. Honestly, for me, my comfort. And this mm. is this is wow. oh, this is where God's working on me right now. Oh. Is that um, I will just make myself comfortable, and like in a in a physical sense, in a mm. spiritual sense, like 
Uh, I like to, you know, be cozy and relaxed. <laughs> and um, it's hard to get anything done when that mm. is where, is the state mm. that I'm in. Yeah. And so I'm needing to um, wake myself up and mm. get up and get active um, because... You know, I, I, I serve in, in church. I serve on the worship mm-hmm. team. I, I serve in a, a, mil, a million different kinds of ministry. <laughs> like, I, I right. and my heart is in it. It yes. really is. But, yes. you know, I have a moment where when I'm done, it, I just shut down. I go home and I want to nap. And, you know, and you, part of that's being an introvert. Okay, yes. But, you know, mm-hmm. come on, Jamie, get, you know, what are you learning? How are you growing? Mm-hmm. And, you know, how are you um, being, how, <laughs> how are you <laughs> not growing it, when mm. you could be growing? Yeah. Mm. Right? Yes. Like, uh, I was having a little pep so talk good. with my son the other day, and he's, you know, watches YouTubers that do like really cool things. And I'm like, you know, it's amazing that, that, you know, People have the capacity to learn to do stuff like that. And I think of, what was I doing when they were learning how to do that? I was probably Mm. sitting on my butt, knitting something and watching a movie or taking a nap. (laughs) Like, (laughs) because this is how Jamie spends her free time. And, you know, just being honest. And so it's like, and it's like, I know this. I know Mm. there's so many people um, growing and doing amazing Mm. things. Um, and spending their their free time mm-hmm. getting better at everything, and and I need to be a little bit more like that. And so mm. my sacrifice is my comfort, and my you know I, I need to give up the mind numbing activities oh, because mm-hmm. it's making me go numb, and that's not oh, God. that's not effective, Jamie. So yeah, so good, so good, yeah. 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 Well, and I, I would have to dovetail right off of that or piggyback whatever we're doing. I'd have to mm-hmm. just lap right on. Doves and piggies. Doves and piggies. Whichever animal. <laughs> whatever. Um, because I... Uh, God's so good the way he just layers things as like, uh-huh, uh-huh, are you getting it now? Uh-huh, we're going to repeat it until you get it, Amanda. Um, but so I... I don't always feel um, confident in walking Mm. in the calling. And so I think that, yeah, being uncomfortable, being stepping out there and saying, (laughs) okay, Lord, are you sure? Because I'm also a people pleaser. So like, Mm. you know, to be Mm -hmm. 100% candid, sometimes when I'm here and I get to speak with you guys, I'm like, well, do they want me there? Am I inviting (laughs) myself on? And not, you know what I mean? And, And I had to really like mm-hmm. wrestle with that. We can go back a couple of weeks. I'm literally wrestling with the Lord. Luckily, my hip's fine. But wrestling with the Lord about it because it's like, are you sure you want me in this position? Mm-hmm. And are you sure that I'm not just, you know, elbowing myself in? And then you hear again and again and again, well, you're not going to get anywhere if you're not elbowing yourself into the line. And I'm not, my heart is always in the right place. So yeah. as long as I continue to seek him in it, yeah. the hope is that I won't step on any toes. I won't, you know, do any of those things. But, yeah, you have to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You, and mm-hmm. it's hard because I'm right there with you. I'm like, well, I'm good at what I'm good at. Can I just stay there? <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's like, no, you don't get to do that. That's yeah. not enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm right there with both of you. Yes, so I think that I think it's important when we chew on a nugget like this to see what does the Lord have for me. Mm. Am I drawing as close to Him as I should be? Am I getting as close as I possibly can? And do I have? A donation? Do I, do I have these things? Because, like you said, Jamie, if not, then maybe I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be for the Lord. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. But it gave me some stuff to chew on, so I appreciate mm-hmm. the conversation and 
Yeah. So, anyway, thanks, yes. ladies. So, yeah, thank you. I'm growing every time I'm here, so I really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. So, and thank you guys for joining us um, for the She Is podcast. If you'd like to start a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, pray this with me. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. I confess that I have sinned and fallen short. I believe that you are the Son of God and have come to cleanse, redeem, and renew me. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, we would love to hear from you. If you have a question or topics you'd like to hear us discuss, or maybe some funsies, um, <laughs> you can email us at sheispodcast at refugecity.church. And remember to like and subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out when new episodes are added. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, remember that you are placed for a purpose.